Alright, we're playing our first match with Quintorius Hulk. Oh, we'll try it. Uh, we have the Torrential Gear Hulk as a play. I don't know how aggressively in best of three you're supposed to mulligan towards the specific combo or if you're just supposed to keep some type of playable hand. I know in best of one I usually mulligan kind of aggressively towards Quintorius Canned, so. Spark Double, not a card you particularly want to draw. Turn one, Thoughtsies. Goodbye, Torrential Gear Hulk. So are we up against Rectus? Or are we up against hmm. One of the downsides of this deck versus uh, the other Pioneer deck I prefer to play is the fact that you can't um, sideboard Leyline of Synchro D against these Rakdos piles. So this hand disruption is going to get you a little bit regardless. So that was dumb, but... Sure. Probably should just play the on top land so we get EOT creative outburst. Yeah, we've got seven mana, so we can cast creative outburst. So There, two damage there. We take two, which isn't ideal, but. Mm-hmm. 
pretty sure we're just dead, but. Yeah, we are in fact just dead. We took too long. All right, so. The combo is a bit of a pipe dream in this matchup, so we probably want the languishes. <sighs> Don't think the rest of it matters. Consign might be better than release the wind. Yeah, the problem with just playing Contorius is as long as they're holding up uh, some type of ability to ping, then you just can't combo with Contorius. Because, you know, it ends up with one toughness, or not one toughness, one loyalty after you discover, th discover four. So, it's just not possible to... combo that way. What I should have done was play the untapped land that we would have been able to create of Outburst and would have given us a little bit better look at cards. Um, we couldn't obviously target the Mayhem Devil because of the um, Witch's Oven blanking it. Sounds fun. Mainly on the back of Languish, and I just pretty much guess that whatever we keep is going to get Thoughtseize or Dressed anyway, so. Yep, turn one Thoughtseize. <laughs> I guess they didn't realize that they're not just dead to that, but um, I guess they're not used to Languish and Quintorius, so... Interesting that they would bring in on License first against... Torrential Gear Hulk, but I suppose that is one way to kind of go over the top of what they're doing, so. This hand is fine. Turn one, Thoughtseize.
sure. This is unfortunately a very fast clock. It's not really hard. Fire up your Hive of the Eye Tyrant and win the game. Yep, that'll do it too. Alright, we'll get this hand it just has no payoff, so I don't think we can keep it, even with the scry land. I mean that said, this hand does have twelve payoffs to draw to, but we are on the draw, so I think we have to be a little bit more judicious. Don't like this hand either. I'll keep this hand and kinda of hope to top deck at this point. Okay, so I'm all in the combo, got it. One of the downsides of this version is the um, inability to deal with Amalia once it grows beyond a certain size. Because the other version of Quintorius has the ability to um, deal with larger creatures with leyline binding. This version, once you get beyond X5, just doesn't uh, doesn't have the ability to deal with creatures.
five. Creative outburst in a relevant time frame. Thank you. One gets to do their thing, but ironically, if we top deck either Quintorius or. Actually, we can't. Yeah, we can cast Quintorius because of Rafines. Pearl Wrath of Borg, they'll have a 20, 20 left. But if we top deck either Quintorius or Trumpeting Carnosaur, we can still potentially win the game. Basically, opponent goofed if they would have kept the uh, wild growth walker around, we just would have been dead. But we draw nothing, so. This is one of the. Downsides of the Quintorius deck is just the fact that, um, not the Quintorius, yeah, the Quintorius deck is simply the fact that you have no card selection, you have no uh, whatever, you're just very locked into your starting hand or top decking. Um, so, this is a sideboard built by Hiro Sakai, like. A week or so ago um not really a quake bringer matchup i don't think um certainly a card you could bring in in this matchup but it feels a little slow and then you have the languishes um both cards could be relevant in the matchup so I think I'm honestly interested in trying the Quake Burners, but I don't really want to go down the combo much either. So. Let's try it like that. Because Quake Bringer keeps the opponent from getting life, which their entire deck is like hinged upon. So. Um, yeah, we'll 
we'll try it. Untap red source would be our best draw. And if they have does Cord do it? Well, Girth Walker would do it certainly. One, two, three. Yeah, if they had Cord, they would win here as well. Just add on board. Okay. I'll match this video. Um, yeah. Six lands, torrential gear hulk, not quite good enough. We'll try this one. Uh, put back Blood Crypt, I guess. Went with turn one thoughtsies every freaking time. Take Magma Opus, which is interesting. Mm -hmm.
Kind of could fatal push this and blank it, but really doesn't do much. If you're going to sack the blood token, why wouldn't you sack it during your turn to try to draw a land? Opponent could easily have Bone Crusher Giant. Yep, Stomp. That's the reason why we didn't go Quintorius there. Release to the winds. This will be the only card that would kind of make sense, but I think we just keep to the main game plan against regular Rakdos mid-range. See. Quakebringer is a card I'm not sure of against Amalia combo and against Angels. So part of the reason why I wanted to try it out against Amalia there. Sand's fine. Kind of any reasonable hand you gotta keep against Rakdos mid, because you can figure you're gonna get hit with a thought seize and a duress and a this and of that and it's just really blood tie sure This is actually kind of a tough one, but I think we need Construct here. Take the hit for six. Okay, so game's over. Go to nine. Discover, release the wind. the winds recast now we only hit spark doubles from here so One. 
right, we're here for a quick wrap with Quintorius Cane Combo. And this is a deck that is probably one of my two current favorite decks to play in the Pioneer slash Explorer format. Uh, this and the uh, Azorius Lotus Kill Combo, personally I prefer the Bant version that I've been working on with Sylvan Scrying and Up the Beanstalk. Um, but Quintorius Cane is very much a kind of glass cannon deck but taking some of the cues from the geological appraiser deck and that you have the quintorius can combo which you know you basically you just saw just executed especially in that last matchup against practice midrange where you get a bunch of spark devils you copy your quintorius's get a bunch of the static triggers and then using release the winds as copies five and six um, the reason I like Release to the Winds as opposed to uh, Clever Impersonator uh, is the fact that you get to recast your spells. Um, you can use it to blank removal on things like Torrential Gear Hulk or Trumpet and Carnosaur, um, in addition to it being part of your combo. Plus, it's also interaction, um, maybe allowing you to buy a little bit of time against something like a Shouldered or Thalia, um, in addition to your Vec Calls. Um, and Trumpet and Carnosaur channel abilities. Uh, beyond that, uh, the difference between this one and the version that we saw in the best of one is obviously the Magma Opus, Creative Outburst, Elemental Masterpiece uh, ramp plan for Torrential Gear Hulk rather than the uh, Snooky and uh, Giant Growth, or not, what was the version of the Notorious Combo? The version that was running um, Greater Tanuki and Beanstalk Giant. I think that's really the two main differences, at least some of the details are definitely different, um, you know, between the various builds of the deck. But the two main camps are, do you use this discard for treasures, or do you use the um, big brand payoffs and then have a bunch of domain cards like Leyline Binding, uh, Hurt, Greater Herd Migration, etc., um, you know, so it just comes down to, do you want the Torrential Gearhawk package or do you want the normal ramp package? Um, both have their pluses and minuses. I haven't figured out which one I think is better yet. Um, in best of one, I think this version is maybe slightly better, uh, but the other version does play a little bit more interaction, so it's kind of six of one, half dozen of the other. The sideboard, this version's a little bit different. Um, Quakebringer is a card that is really, I think, only Hero Sakai. There may be a few others have toyed with this. Um, I'm thinking it's mainly for the Amalia combo, as well as it's a decent threat against control, especially when you're packing four copies of Cavernous Souls, basically meaning they have to have one-for-one one removal, because every single one of your creature-based threats, whether it be Quakebringer or Trumpeting Carnosaur or Torrential Gear Hulk, all of them hit really, really hard. Um, Quakebringer is a 5-4 that um, if it's in play or if you have another Quakebringer in play, your opponent's taking 2 damage each upkeep. Uh, Trumpeting Carnosaur is a 7-6 that when you're copying it is an 8-7. Torrential Gear Hulk just gets you a lot of value with either Creative Outburst or Magma Opus. And then if you're copying that, you know, you're getting ridiculous value, whether it be drawing cards, card selection, dealing your opponent damage to the face. Um, so I think there's a lot of awesome things going on here. I like this version. Uh, Thought Distortion, obviously primarily there for blue white X control. Um, also good against the Lotus Field combo when it's relevant. Obviously it's not relevant to explore right now because it's still missing a few pieces, mainly hidden strings, but it is relevant in the more uh, full or Pioneer format. Consigned to Oblivion, another interaction spell that also has a mine rot attached to the back end. So I have to do a little bit more work with this version in the best of three. Most of my practice with this deck, honestly, is in best of one. So you just kind of get to mulligan towards Quintorius combo, or sometimes if you're on a mulligan to four or five, you uh, keep a hand with either Trumpet and Carnosaur or Turchill Gear Hulk. Um, not 100% sure that's correct in best of three. That's why I was keeping a little bit wider range of hands to see. But um, I think the matchups we saw, Ammonia combo is close. It's really two glass cannons going at each other. Um, I think Amolia is a little bit faster, but this deck with a little bit more interaction. I think if you keep a Quintorius can, 
plus interaction hand. I think you're pretty favored in that matchup um, as they don't keep a bunch of interaction for what you're doing, um, especially now that Appraiser is no longer in the format. They don't really main deck get lost or anything like that. Whereas I think Rakdos Sack is actually a little bit tougher than Rakdos Midrange, specifically because uh, Rakdos Sack has on board hate in the form of Mayhem Devil, whereas Rakdos Midrange has to keep up mana to interact usually, um, whether that be Bone Crusher Giant, um, the new two mana heroes downfall that I'm drawing a blank on that sees play out of Phoenix. Um, you know, it has to see keep cards like that or the one mana um, uh, shock that they play sometimes. Um, it has to keep those kind of cards up as it, to interact with the Quintorius King combo. And if they ever tap out and you happen to have Quintorius can, they're just dead, whereas Rakdos Sack can continue to, you know, leverage their battlefield presence while also, you know, keeping an onboard way with, you know, Mayhem Devil plus Witch's Oven or, you know, a treasure token or whatever to keep Quintorius from killing them. So I think this deck will never quite get out of hand, but I do think it is good to have a turn four combo deck in the format. Uh, Torrential Gear Hulk is a nice backup plan. Uh, tax from a little bit different angle you know you get value cards as well as a 5-6 body out of nowhere um, and then Trumbling Carnosaur kind of tying it all together as both you know something you can use to kill your opponent's creatures um, you know whether it be a Thalia or something that's keeping you from you know using your Quintorius Canned um, while also you know just a little bit of interaction so your opponent's never quite sure what they're playing around um, obviously this deck plays a lot of lands, and the Cavern of Souls are a nice touch against control, making Trumpet and Carnosaur and Torrential Gearhawk uncounterable, as well as Quakebringer. So, not sure which of the versions is better yet, definitely need a little bit of testing, but this is probably one of the two decks I'll probably be playing a lot on the channel moving forward, as they're the ones in Pioneer slash Explorer I enjoy the most, and I do want to kind of narrow down to having one main, one main deck for the channel to focus on going into 2024. As well as still working on you know the top five lists, you know decks you should know, deck guides, those kind of things. So I want to kind of get us to having one central focus deck and then kind of building a channel around that in addition to the other um, deck guide content, etc. So we'll still do the quick hits and stuff, so you'll still see a lot of the other decks in the format, but mainly we do want to focus on one deck to kind of give the channel a little bit more of a focus moving into 2024. So if you like Pioneer content, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hope to see you for our next video.